So in this lecture, we're going to work a fairly comprehensive problem using the process cost system. Process cost being something that we're going to use for production. So whenever we're using job costs or process costs, we are producing something. The difference between job costs and process costs being that job cost usually has a differentiation of things we produce. Process cost being very similar types of things. So it's things like processing oil or something like that. So we then have to allocate to the process rather than individual jobs. So that's what we're going to have here. We're going to have the data. On Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. On the left hand side, we're going to enter that into the blue areas and then we're going to have our trial balance, which will populate automatically. We will post the journal entries here to the general ledger on the side. Once we post to the general ledger, it will automatically populate our trial balance here. This will obviously be making more sense as we go. We can see the trial balance formatted in terms of assets in green, liabilities in orange or yellow, and equity in the lighter blue, and then the income statement, sales and expenses in the darker blue. We have net income, just the bottom half here. We just got the gain or loss at this time. And we can see that the debits equal the credits because the debits minus the credits equal zero. We're going to put it in this format over here, having debits with positive numbers, credits with negative numbers. That allows us to save some room uh, in, in posting this information here. We, of course, will break out the debits and credits in terms of a debit column and a credit column on this side, as well as represent the credits with negatives. And that's how we know we're in balance on the trial balance, meaning that the debits minus the credits equals zero. We could see that on the general ledger too. So if we added up all the GL accounts in this way, we can use formulas to see that the debits equal the credits on the balance of all these accounts, which is of course what is making up the trial balance. All right, so let's work through this problem. We're gonna start off, uh, they're gonna give us the inventory at the end. So we're gonna need that later. We don't need that quite yet. We can see that we're going to be focusing in, of course, on the inventory accounts to do process costing as we produce our inventory. So those accounts include the main ones we'd be focusing on are raw materials inventory, work and process inventory, finished goods inventory, and overhead. I'm putting in the inventory section here. And then once we sell it, that inventory will finally go to the cost of goods sold when we sell the uh, inventory. And that's the expense related to us using the inventory in order to generate revenue by giving it to a customer. So what we have here, then we have the raw materials purchased on credit. So that's the first thing that we are going to take a look at. If we purchase something on credit, the uh, idea then I would always ask is cash affected? In this case, no, we purchased it on credit. So instead of paying cash, we paid with a payable. So what's gonna go into accounts payable. Now it might be easier to think about what we're getting. We're gonna get raw materials. Raw materials is up here, it's an asset, has a debit balance. We're gonna make it go up, so we're gonna do the same thing to it, which in this case is another debit. So I'm gonna copy the raw materials. I'm gonna put that on top in the debit area, the amount being 300,000. We're gonna credit something 300,000, so I'm gonna put a negative of that number. There's that number, or you could just put a negative 300,000 for this worksheet's purposes. We're gonna put all credits as negative numbers to help us with some formulas for Excel. All right, so we have the negative 300,000 and that's gonna go into the payable. It's not gonna be cash going down. It's not the good thing going down. It's the bad thing going up. Payable's going up, it has a credit balance. We're gonna make it go up again with this, doing the same thing to it, which is another credit by copying that account, putting it over here. I'm gonna paste it, right click, paste it one, two, three. Again, I don't wanna write over the formulas. You could, but I'd rather paste it one, two, three, keep the blue cell. Now we're gonna post this to the general ledger. This is called posting to the general ledger as we've done many times in the past. So the general ledger will be in order, the same as the trial balance. So we've got the assets, then the liabilities, then the equity, and then the income statement. So we're looking for raw materials. It's the third account on the, G on the trial balance. Therefore, it'll be the third account on the general ledger. So here's the GL cash, count seeable, raw materials. 
I'm going to put my cursor in O23. This is O23 and just say equals. And then I could use the arrows and just go over here until we go up to what we want to post, which is this item here and enter. So there is that item. The next one is account payable. That's going to be the first orange account down here. So it's in the same order on this side. So the first orange account is right there. So it's going to be a credit. So I'm all the way over here in cell X22, X22 right there. I'm going to say equals and then scroll over till you can see it. And then go into the 300,000 credits and enter. Now, if you want to see them at the same time, we could also, of course, uh, change the screen and make the screen a bit smaller like this so we can see the 300, the 300 there. And what that does to our balance is, of course, put us back in balance by uh, having the debits equal the credits here as well as the debits equal the credits here. And we can see that uh, our raw materials inventory is uh, 368 in our running balance and 368 has then populated here this number coming from there so that's going to be the first journal entry we have next one we have the factory depreciation and i did switch this up a bit i moved this one down here and put the factory depreciation next so that's the next one we will take a look at so we have depreciation on the factory anytime something sets we are going to be working in the factory that's an indication that it's going to be part of inventory if it was depreciation on the office building where we do the administrative work that wouldn't be going to the asset of inventory if it's on the factory where we make inventory then it's going to go into the inventory so that means that instead of debiting like we have learned in the past the depreciation expense which we've probably just memorized that journal entry we need to now unmemorize it because really the reason it's going to go into the expense is because we used it in order to generate revenue which is the matching principle in that time period but this time we're using it to generate revenue later it hasn't helped us generate revenue yet it's helping us generate the asset, that asset being inventory. Later, we will expense it in the form of cost of goods sold. So we're going to put it into the asset in this case. And we don't know where to put it yet. We don't know what process really to put it into. So we're going to dump it into our bucket, the bucket assets for inventory being factory overhead. So I'm going to copy factory overhead. We're going to put that on top, paste it one, two, three right there. That's going to be the 50,000. So then we're going to credit something for that same 50,000. I'm going to do it by saying negative of this number. And the credit's going to be exactly what we thought it would be. So that's just, the, that's the normal half of it. So it's, instead of debit, debiting depreciation expense, we debit factory overhead and we credit accumulated depreciation. So accumulated depreciation is going to be the uh, allocation of the cost. So it costs 250,000 less the accumulated depreciation. 200,000 is the book value at this time we're going to credit this accumulated depreciation so i'm going to copy that i'm going to put that in cell b13 that's going to be the bottom amount there and now we can post this out so we're going to post this out so i'm going to scroll over here now we can see that the factory overhead is like the one two three four five sixth account down here it's going to be the same when we go to the general ledger over here so we got the factory overhead is way down here we are on the debit side so i'm in cell s27 so s27 and i can just barely see my journal entry up here so s27 equals this cell in c12 and enter the other side is going to go to the uh accumulated depreciation and that's going to be the like the last green asset account on the trial balance which of course means it's going to be the last account over here in the general ledger so i'm in x16 if you want to see it all together, you can hold down control and scroll down and that'll make it a little bit smaller so you can kind of see the whole screen if that's useful. We're in X16 way over here. I'm going to say equals and I'm going to point to the credit. And when I hit enter, it's going to make that 50 go up to 100 like so. That 100 also represented here. I'm going to hold down control, scroll back up, back to 100% over there. And now we've got this 100 represented here and we've got uh the factory overhead went up by and to that fifty thousand. all right let's see look take a look at the next item the next item is going to be factory utilities on account so this is going to be the same type of principle and remember again we probably learned factory utilities as we're going to debit utilities expense anytime we say utilities we probably think utilities expense debit but uh, in this case, that's the general rule, but that's because we usually use utility expense in order to help us generate revenue, matching principle. In this case, we're using utilities in the factory to help us generate asset up here, inventory. 
Therefore, and we don't know where exactly the process to put it to, so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put a debit to instead of the expense of utilities. We're gonna put it into the asset of inventory, more specifically, factory overhead. And, I'm, and again, I'm putting the factory overhead up in the asset account because it's gonna be an asset uh, event once we allocated it out. So I'm gonna copy that, I'm gonna put that on top, paste it, one, two, three, that's gonna be for the 28,000. In this case, we're gonna credit something for 28,000 as well that credit is going to go to now usually when we pay the utility bill we pay with cash but uh, we're going to put it into the uh, payable in this case because it said on account so we're not going to hit cash we're going to put it uh, into the payable on account so i'm going to copy accounts payable and that's going to be the credit pasting it one two three posting this out if we scroll down one two three four five six is the sixth account down factory overhead so we're going to scroll over here find factory overhead which is right there, it's in S28. So here's S28, we're gonna say that that equals this 28,000, it's gonna go up in that direction. And then we got the accounts payable, first orange account over here. So if we're looking for accounts payable, there it is. Once again, I'm gonna hit scroll, I'm in X23. Scroll and down, or control and scroll down, and that will make the screen smaller. So we can see that at the same time. So I'm in X23 equals, we're gonna to point to that 28,000, making the payable go up because we owe more money. Gonna scroll back over here to the trial balance and within the trial balance, let's go back down to 100. We can see our items within the trial balance here. Next item says we got the direct materials used to 14,500. So this is what we're gonna use uh, in the production of, of course, our inventory. That's what we're using it uh, in order to do. So what's happened is we got the raw materials here. We've got the raw materials and now we're putting them to use. So you can visualize the raw materials like a pile of wood in the corner. We're putting that to use in the production process being the work in process at this time. So we're gonna take it out of raw materials and we're just gonna move it down here. So it's gonna go into work in process, the, uh, the inventory in process. That has a debit, we're gonna make it do the same thing by making it go up with another debit. So I'm gonna copy the work in process, paste it one, two, three. It's gonna go up by the 214.5 and then we're gonna credit something. I'm gonna put negative of the 214.5 and we're gonna credit the raw material. Raw material being an asset, it's going down out of raw materials into the work in process. Copying this account, putting it underneath, right clicking, pasting one, two, and three.